How's it going guys? So in today's video, we're gonna do a long overdue upgrade and that is of my green tree python enclosure. This enclosure is a little bit tired, it's a little bit worn. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make it a slightly bit bigger and we're gonna build it out of concrete as form ply. So stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. So another reason for going with the uh, black form ply enclosure is the fact that most of my enclosures are now actually black. So I wouldn't mind this one actually kind of conforming to the structure of the room here. But I've had multiple enclosures built out of different things. So I've got, you know, your standard Reptile 1 enclosures and I've also got these new enclosures that I've built for the frill neck, the Kimberley and my adult gillums. This is actually made out of like a plastic like uh, material that cuts like timber but it's plastic so it's not going to rot. Loki's enclosure I'm probably actually going to end up painting black just so it actually conforms with it as well and the two URS cages well they're, they're grey enough as is. Two racks I'll probably end up making, remaking again anyway. That one there, the large one, that got quite a bit of water damage in the last big storm that we had that took out a few roof tiles. So we'll be looking to remake that one. I'm not sure if I'm going to have too many animals to actually fit into this one shortly, so that's just going to become a bit more of a storage container. There goes one of those iron tiles straight into the termite mound, which you would have seen on a previous video, and two younger individuals. So yeah, anyway, enough rambling, let's crack on. I've just about cut all the timber panels now, so now it's just time to screw them all together. In this circumstance, I'm actually just going to reuse the Perspex doors that I've already got in their enclosure. Um, down the line, I will probably buy some glass and just kind of alter one of the, uh, either the top or the bottom rung that's going to go across here just to match the glass height, uh, which is going to be easier, easier as just ripping a, a part of the strip off with a saw. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do going forward is we're going to put this guy in here. I'm going to do a screw down either end. Now it's important to do it on opposite ends, opposite sides of the track, just so then you get one door that's going to be going full length of the uh, of the actual cabinet itself. Um, the other thing I am going to do, and it would have been nice to have a brand new nozzle for this, but I am going to put a little bit of Sally's liquid nails down the bottom just to kind of secure it into place. Not so important to do this for the top track because the top track's actually deeper. For the, the doors to actually slide up and in so you can drop them in so you'll just be able to screw them all well, the whole way along without having any issues down the line when you're sliding the doors all right so i'll get started i'll put this in we'll see how she looks after that so i've gone and had to rip that top panel for the for the front track or the top tracks rather sorry 
I've cut the tractor sawyers as well. I've gone ahead and pre-drilled a few holes through here as well, just so I can make sure that I'm not kind of bowing or splitting the track at all while I'm going to screw this into place. So next step from here, screw it in. Make sure we get it nice and lined up. This is probably about the hardest thing about making an enclosure is just making sure that you got the tracks all good and that uh, your glass or your perspex or whatever you've cho chosen to make your doors out of is going to fit properly. So we're just screwing it in at four points. That's pretty good. Just got one more spot to do. Existing door panels. There we go. So something else that I usually do with uh, as we're going anywhere with these enclosures, so I'll also actually use the the last bit of track as well to just make a bit of an area so that the door can actually slide into. Um, however, I'm not going to do this just yet because as I said, I'm probably going to put glass doors in there, you know, in the next few weeks or something that are actually going to be a bit taller than what they are going to be. So I may need to rip down this board to make sure that they're going to fit. Um, so if I was to have cut these and put these into place, then going forward, they're going to be too short. So I may as well just hold off and wait until I've got the glass and everything ready to go. Then I can go, go through and put these in. So I've gone ahead. I've actually just fixed the LED from the Green Tree Python's old enclosure in, into place. Got the heat panel up there. Looks nice and sleek in black. You're never going to see it. Even once I do end up trimming this down, you won't see it. I've got one of their perches in place. I had a good neighbour come and give me a hand to just lift it up on top of the, the diamonds cage. So from here what I'm planning to do is actually to cut some big chunks of um, golden cane palm that my father-in-law cut down from his actual yard the other, uh, the other weekend. And we're going to cut that into sections and kind of just do some vertical pieces in through there. Probably another horizontal branch, maybe a bit lower down. And then we'll uh, start fitting it out, put the pothos back in there, and hopefully get these green trees in. So there you go. We've got a few of our vertical pieces cut. If I figure it, if I find out that it really needs more in there, then I've got a few more other pieces to work with. Well, this will do us for now. We'll start putting those in. So I've gone and fixed those in now. So all I did was actually just drill down through the roof of the enclosure into the top of each one of those upright uh, branches just to kind of pin them in place and then the substrate's going to do all the other pinning for any that might be yeah, a little bit wobbly just because they're a little bit loose um, but yeah, I mean, the green trees aren't going to knock them over at all that's just a way to secure them in so then they don't um, accidentally knock them onto themselves I'm going to start fitting out the pothos and the um, substrate in there so for the substrate I'm just going to chuck in some yuki mulch I've just got half a bag of it there so that'll probably fill up the enclosure nicely. Then I'll probably have to put the green trees in a bag while I uh, quickly take out their branch that they're still clinging to and then fix that into here as well. And we'll get back to it and it should look good soon. 
I have to say, I'm pretty excited about this enclosure build. Very easy done. Each sheet of uh, form ply I think was $11 from Bunnings, so I spent $55 on the ply itself and about 20 bucks on a track. So call it about $75 including, uh, including some screws, but everything else I kind of had lying around, so you know, you'd have to factor that into your own build. Um, thermostats, heat panels, decor, all the rest of it. It's time to get these little guys in. Hopefully I haven't aggravated them too much. So this is my beautiful little male, or one of them. Let him in here and loose to explore around. Of course he just wants to go straight up. We'll give him a second and then we'll uh, go and get the girl. Here's my gorgeous girl, Midori. She's a little bit agitated just because I was just playing around with her a little bit just because she's got a tiny bit of stuck shit on her nose. She's a beautiful animal. I'll leave her to go into here as well. And explore a new home. So in comparison to their last enclosure, the last enclosure was about 500 mil high, 450 mil deep, and 1200 long. This one now is 1200 long, 600 high, 600 deep. So it's a little bit bigger than what it was before. Not an incredible upgrade, but the actual timber itself I think will last a lot longer than what the old chipboard one was going to. Not only that, but all the black looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing. So I hope you enjoyed today's video guys. Um, just a quick and easy one of just how to build a simple reptile enclosure. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay updated with what's coming. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.